Kia ora, monakam, and hello. My name is Vinu and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Otago in New Zealand. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about health sciences first year because that's the course that most students at the University of Otago do to get into medicine and other health professional programs. So if you're clicked on this video, you might be a student that's going into health science or you might be someone that's already in health science depending on when you're watching this. But if that's the case, then I really hope you find this video helpful. I've also added timestamps below so you can skip the parts you want. And with that out of the way, let's get into the chunk of this video. And that is, what is health science? Now, listen to this carefully. Let's say you want to be a doctor, a pharmacist, a dentist, a physiotherapist, or a medical laboratory technician, but don't know where to start, then health science in first year is your way to go. So basically, it's a one-year course that is provided exclusively by the University of Otago. And it's a requirement for students to complete before they can apply for any one of these five health professional programs. But that's not all. Health science can also be a really good preparation for three other programs, which are oral health, dental technology, and radiation therapy. Now, the only difference between these three and the five that I mentioned earlier is that health science especially is not a requirement. So you can apply to them directly if you wish to do so. And before I move on from this section, there are three really important information that you should know about health science first year. Number one is that if you're going to do health science, it must be your first year of university studies. Number two is that don't get health science and bachelor of health science mixed up. They're two different programs offered by the University of Otago. The only difference is health science is a one year course and when you finish it, you don't have a degree. Bachelor of Health Science is a course that extends for X number of years and when you finish it you have a degree under your name. Number three is that every health science student is required to undergo an English diagnostic test. It happens really early on in semester one, but don't worry, most students pass it perfectly fine. But if you do fail it, you can do it again a second time later on. But if you fail it the second time, then you have to take an English paper which they call English 128. Now that you know what health science is and why it's important, let's talk a bit more about what you'll actually be studying, the content. So a lot of people like to think of health science as a stepping stone towards the desired program. And honestly, I'll be lying if I didn't think that at first too. But now that I've done health science, I think it's better to think of it as a course that is designed to give you a very basic understanding of the key areas related to health and science. It's that foundational layer that is going to help you when you go into your professional programs. So what exactly does it cover? Well, let's break it down. So it consists of seven compulsory core papers split across two semesters, four in semester one and three in semester two. However, you do have the option of choosing an eighth paper in semester two, which I'll talk a bit more about later. For now, let's talk about your seven one papers, which are Hubs 191, Cells 191, Physics 191, and Chem 191. So first up, we have Hubs 191. HUBS stands for Human Body Systems, and just a heads up is that every paper in Health Sciences first year is an introduction to something specific. So HUBS, for example, is an introduction to the structure, which is the anatomy, and function, which is the physiology of our bodies, as well as how different systems function under different conditions. HUBS 191 is made of five modules, which are bones and biomechanics, biostatistics, the nervous system, the endocrine system, and the immune system. Next, we have Cells 191. Cells 191 is an introduction to how cells work, the key ideas in molecular genetics, and the essentials of genetics both at the level of organisms and molecules. But that's not it. Along your Cells 191 journey, you will learn why people look different because of the genes, get to explore the variety and biology of microorganisms, and also look at how microbes can cause diseases. Cells 191 is made of four modules, which are cell structure and diversity, molecular biology and genetics, human molecular genetics, and microbiology and immunology. Next up, we have Physics 191. Now, you might be wondering, why do we have physics in a course that is called Health Science? Isn't physics about finding the velocity, the acceleration, or finding the voltage across a particular circuit? I mean, all of that is true, but Physics 191 aims to give you an introduction on how those concepts of physics applies to health and life sciences. And believe it or not, a lot of processes within the human body can be explained using physics. So physics is made up of six modules, which are mechanics, solids and fluids, thermodynamics, electricity, optics, and radiation and health. 
Next up, for your final paper for semester one, you have Chem 191. To put it simply, Chem 191 is an introduction to the chemical processes in biological systems. It's made up of four modules, which are chemical reactions in aqueous solutions, energetics, organic chemistry, which is everyone's favorite, and finally you get to do structures and reactions of biological molecules. Whoa, that was a lot of information just for semester one. So once you guys are done with semester one, you go back home for three weeks and then come back refreshed to start semester two. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, SEM2 has three core papers, which are Hubs 192, Biop 192, and Pop Health 192. That's right, your journey with Hubs doesn't stop after semester one. So if you thought you got away from anatomy and physiology, well, think again. But jokes aside, the description is the same as Hubs 191, but this time you have six different modules, which are skin, the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the gastrointestinal system, the renal system, and finally the reproductive system. Yes, a lot of systems. Now, Hubs 192 is my favorite paper, and the big reason for that is we get to learn about the cardiovascular system, which is a big interest of mine. So me and Hubs 192 are very tight, we're like this. Next up, we have Bioc 192. Bioc simply stands for biochemistry, and it's actually my second favorite paper. Bioc 192 is an introduction to how proteins and enzymes work, how our bodies get to use the energy that we get from food, and how different processes in our body relate to health and disease. It's made up of three very chunky modules, which are proteins, molecular biology, and metabolism. And as your final paper for semester two, you have Pop Health 192. Pop Health stands for population health. And it's a very interesting paper. The reason why I say that is for some people, it's their best paper, while for others, it's their worst paper. The main reason for that is because many students are not used to learning the type of content that is taught in Pop Health 192. So what exactly does it cover? Well, it's made of six modules, which are medical humanities, enablers of well-being, disease detectives, study designs, critical thinking, and finally, using the evidence. Now, some of these modules might not make any sense to you right now, but when you actually do health science, it goes through each of them, they will make much more sense. So that's it for your seven core cool papers. But wait, what about that optional eighth paper? So in semester two, every health science student has a choice to make, and that is whether to take an eighth paper or to not take an eighth paper. A lot of students do take an eighth paper as a backup. So what that means is if for some reason, one of your core cool papers is lacking, maybe you didn't do it too well in your exam, you can replace it with your eighth paper. But that doesn't mean you can just completely fail one of your core cool papers and then replace it with an eighth paper because the university has certain requirements that you must meet with your core papers to actually replace one of them and that requirement is going to vary depending on the program you're applying for so please do your own research now on the university website there's a big list of papers you can choose from um, if you're interested i'll add the link in the description but if you're wondering what i chose then i chose stats 115 as my eighth paper now, in this final part of the video, I'll quickly go over the structure of health science. Just like any other university, you're going to have your daily lectures that you go to. So in health sciences first year, you're going to have three lectures per paper each week. And each lecture is going to be around 45 minutes long. Some may be longer and some may be shorter. Now, the interesting thing about lectures is that you don't have to physically go to every one of them. And that's because every lecture is recorded and you'll have access to your recordings for around two weeks from the date it was recorded. And then they'll re-release the recording around a week before your final exam. So it is not compulsory for you to physically go to the lecture. And it's not like high school where they check your attendance. In university, you either show up or you don't, and they don't really care. However, what is compulsory and is really important are your labs. Labs is where you get to be more hands-on with the content that you're learning from your lecture. So for example, if you're in a cells lab, you might get to look at cells and microorganisms under the microscope. Now, it is really important that you go to your labs because if you don't, then you won't be able to sit your final exam. So they're really, really important. Now, if you have to like skip a lab for some reason, you can always reschedule it, but you must have a valid reason. For each paper, you're going to have one lab every two weeks, and in total, you're going to have five labs per paper. Each lab is three hours long, which I know is a long time, but you just have to do it. And the reason why you have five labs is because 
After each lab, you have these mini assignments called LATS. LATS are just a number of questions that are going to test you on the stuff that you did in your lab. You have five labs, which means you're gonna have five LATS, and each lab will have a certain due date, which you have to complete it by. And it's really important that you do because your LATS actually make up 10% of your final grade, which means each lab is worth 2%. Now all your papers will have labs and lads except population health. So it actually doesn't have any labs. Instead, it has tutorials, which are similar to labs uh, in terms of duration. So they're three hours long, but it just doesn't have any lads afterward. Next, I'll talk about progress tests. So your progress tests actually make out 20% of your final grade for these papers and 30% of your final grade for population health because it doesn't have any lads. Now, some of your papers actually have two progresses instead of one, and I'll just chuck over here which ones they are. All your progresses will be MCQs, except for Population Health, where one of its progresses is actually an essay that you have to write and submit before a due date. And finally, we come to the final exam. So if you've done your maths right so far, you should get that your final exam makes up 70% of your final grade. Now, in terms of your final exam structure, regardless of the paper, they're all going to have MCQs. Some will be only limited to MCQs, some will have a mix of MCQs and short answer questions, while others will have MCQs and mini essays. So that is it for this video guys, I know there was a lot of information, but if you did find this video helpful or if you got any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and of course turn the bell notification on so you don't miss out on my next video. So I'll see you guys in my next video, thank you.